Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain. Alhamdulillah. All praise be to Allah Subhanahu wa taala that give us this opportunity to do dakwah and with his permission uh, we can continue our dakwah uh, to train All right, uh, as many people as possible to our YouTube channel so that we can train young people to become uh, the dakwah workers of Islam using our new format based on the videos that we are uploading more than 600 videos in YouTube we are giving you ideas on Islamic motivation, coaching, mentoring, counseling and Islam heart of love uh, these are five levels of training and you need to do only very simple 30 videos uh, and then PowerPoint and do a practicum all right. So what is important is our approach to dakwah is radically different from the standard approach. Our approach is this approach of transforming the self, the family, ummah, global using positive Islamic psychology methodology. And I've given you some ideas within positive Islamic psychology, the understanding of the feelings, emotion and thought cycle at a higher level. All right. This is where we are talking about intuition, we're talking about basira, we're talking about ilham, we're talking about the input from the angelic realm that influence us, the subtleties in life which we have to understand. And the negativity I have given you in the understanding of how the negativity affects our uh, thoughts, emotion, feelings, cycle, all right? And how is this model in our positive Islamic psychology model you must understand this inshallah of the four rims of existence and the model in terms of the input that affects our perception in terms of physical environment social environment inner speech all right of the physical and spiritual existence and i'm going to give you some idea further because i'm extracting this from the work of said hussein nas professor said hussein nas professor emeritus and his student all right professor Oman ba osman baka all right so I'm adapting it to, to, for the latest understanding so that you can understand. Within Islamic, uh, classical or traditional metaphysics, we have the gross world or the physical world, and then we have the subtle world. But now because of quantum physics, we can see that the intermediary between the subtle and the gross world is what we call the quantum world. It's just a terminology only, yeah? because there's a lot of understanding now in terms of quantum realities. What is quantum reality? We have this understanding that uh, prior even to the Big Bang, there is what they call the quantum vacuum, that, that there is a forces acting on it and then we have the existence of the universe and so on. But whatever it is, the quantum state is both physical in terms of particles and also wave. All right? And in the quantum state, there is what we call quantum entanglement. So whatever is in the protons, whether if it is in the physical state, can be entangled whether they are far away uh, at the edge of the universe and instantaneously when you excite one the other one will also react in immediately so this is the subtle world this is within the subtle world eh? so when you talk about the quantum world it is the interface between the physical this is the material gross world what we call it the physical material world and the subtle world so the interface now is all about this quantum reality uh, quantum vacuum quantum particle and quantum uh, waveform all right quantum entanglement so all this is giving you an idea that within the islamic metaphysics we are talking about the physical world and the subtle world now we are now understanding from the islamic perspective uh, from the scientific perspective that there is interface between the gross world and the subtle world and there are levels in terms of the subtle world eh, which i'm going to give you some overview and understanding but what is important now is that whatever is the traditional ideas in terms of Islamic metaphysics comes from revelation from the Quran and come from the Sunnah, the Hadith of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. So when we talk about those, those are the reality of truth at various levels of understanding. Eh? So for example, if we talk about the realities of existence and understanding within the traditional Islamic metaphysics, especially Ahli Tasawwuf, and uh, people who has gone into the understanding of these reams of existence experientially. Yeah? Remember, like our great Imam, Al Imam Ghazali, Hujatullah, they, they go through experientially. He left the, the dunya aspect and moved into the inner aspect to understand the subtleties of existence. All right? So, this aspect is 
being explained within the framework of tasawwuf uh, and in, in that sense the realms of reality the material world the subtle world the angelic world the divine qualities and divine essence these are just division uh, in terms of how we perceive the metaphysics of existence how we perceive our existence in this dunya that we are not just a gross material substance for example like this gross world is just a material world so now the scientists are saying okay now we have to take cognizant of the quantum world because the quantum world is both gross and subtle both these qualities are now this interface at uh, this interface and we have not resolved this issue because at the aspect of the particle we can explain scientifically but aspect of the wave and beyond the subtleties there's no explanation so we have to go back to the understanding from revelation so in islam we have the framework already it's a matter of merging it with modern scientific knowledge eh? so i'm giving you an idea because when i see this uh, this chart is an adaptation from professor osman bakar chart where he explains about the gross world and the subtle world but now i'm giving you another ream the interface between the gross world and the subtle world is the quantum world and how muslim scientists will be able to study this quantum world and then understand how it relates to the five realms of existence again these five realms of existence is from the perspective of islamic metaphysics the ahli ahli tasawwuf who has studied this and those who experience higher levels of perception eh? for example within the understanding of tasawwuf we have the understanding of the, for example the material world is the nasud the realm of the nasud the subtle world is the realm of the malakut the jabarut is the realm of the malaikat and then we have lahut and hahut lahut is the realm of the divine qualities and then hahut of the divine essence so this is the zat of allah and this concept al-hadra al-ilahiya al-khams the five realms of divine existence this was a traditional viewpoint from a lot of scholars eh? they have distilled this into some sort of understanding that we can then perceive and how this is related to ourselves and how we can then bring about an understanding of how to motivate ourselves eh? because as i mentioned to you from the subtle world the qualities of the angelic world how it affects our i go back to our model feelings emotion and thoughts so our feelings emotion and thoughts at the higher level which is positive comes from not only the gross material world but also from the levels of the subtle world as we go higher and higher the five levels so each of these five levels affects us as an individual and if we are able to partake in all this aspect at the higher level of positivity then inshallah we would be able to have a wonderful understanding of the nature of our existence the purpose and the meaning of existence uh, the purpose and the realm of existence not only in the physical world not only in the gross world not in the realms of the jasad but in the realms of the subtle world and from the subtle world we know that we have a higher and higher level of understanding that we are created in the image of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not the physical image eh? remember the qualities that he has given us in some small qualities of his attributive aspect he is the absolute for example all powerful he is absolute all knowing we have some knowledge uh, but even that knowledge is enough for us to bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to understand the nature of our existence and the reality of the realms of existence so that when we can bring this together and logically put this up as a way forward for our young people then they say wow our great teachers in the past uh, whether it is the uh, uh, for example Ibn Sina or Ibn uh, Arabi and, and so on there's so many of them putting together from the experiential aspect of understanding life remember if we talk about ilmu kalam or we talk about the uh, rational understanding of the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we must always go back to the basis of revelation so where the basis of revelation is bringing us to understand our existence as a sincere servant of Allah as his Khalifa on the earth to understand we given a certain amount of free will to exercise to realize the grandeur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to motivate ourselves to strive to be the best in terms of 
we striving to make ourselves good, help others to be good and make the world good, inshallah.